Hey, I'm uh, coming into port. I'll just uh, show you my uh, solar system setup. I'm on the autopilot right now. I finished my flexible solar panel installation last summer. And so what I'd like to do is go over uh, some of the things I've learned and my impression on um, using um, flexible solar panels on a sailboat. And my 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 use is for coastal cruising so people who are um, doing long-term cruising um, may not um, think that you know and I, I think solar panels might not be good for them um, but for my purposes they're good so I'm gonna go over a general schematic um, why I like flexible panels um, and then um, you know, some of the cons of the flexible solar panels that I've seen and read about on the internet and um, the different technologies on the flexible solar panels, the different features, and then um, the brands of, you know, solar panels and, you know, the different price ranges and, and why they may appeal to different people. Um, and then how to mitigate some of the issues with um, the, the, the flexing of the, the flexible solar panels and some of their reliability issues and performance and uh, how we can use uh, multi-wall um, polycarbonate to um, be a rigid backer. Um, and then roughly talk about my charge controllers and um, what, how much, how many, um, you know, solar panels, how many watts do you actually uh, need? So um, the reason why uh, I like um, the solar, the flexible solar panels is because they can easily just kind of lay on existing uh, infrastructure and, and you don't need to build the separate infrastructure like this. Um, some of the cons of the, um, of the, of the, the, flexible solar panels are pitting and then sometimes what happens is when you over flex these things kind of uh, this wiring inside here breaks well there's two kinds of um, of uh, flexible panels there's uh, ETFE and then there's PET and as you can see here um, this is from um, lens Len, uh, lens Sun but um, one of the manufacturers that that are um, saying that ETFE is better than PET, and it's um you you get a little bit um, more performance out of them in terms of production, and they're uh, a lot um they're they're a lot tougher it 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 would it would seem, um so um there's um these this ETFE is um. It, it, it's it's a different layer. It's a different sandwich uh, versus um, the um, P P E T, and they also have an issue where um, they don't um, they they sometimes over their there's they don't they heat up and they don't dissipate heat, so you don't get as uh, good as production as you would uh, a, a kind of a, a panel that has airflow underneath. So th those are the um, the kind of cons. And as far as YouTube videos with the cons, there's a guy uh, Will Pros that does a great job of um, telling you about all the cons in this video here and you could make a decision for yourself um, as far as a guy that does the pros this guy here Brian at RV with Tito is a great uh, guy he, he he tells you he's very honest he has used these things for several years on the roof of his RV the uh, the flexible panels and has gotten very creative with the mounting and I just think he's a pretty trustworthy source and that's the reason why I adopted the um, you know the flexible panel um, so the other thing I'd like to quickly go over is a basic schematic of my system I have one 100 amp 
or 100 watt I put on the Dodger and another one I use for roaming and the roaming one I have a backing I have the multi wall um, backing which I'll show you I use MC4 con connectors to uh, extension cords sort of the, uh, on on deck so I just um, hook it, the extension cord up and then hook the and hook the panel to the extension cord so I can deploy these panels when I go out on trips and I can stow them in the four peak when I'm done. I use two of these Victron uh, MPPT controllers. Uh, I need to use two because I have shading and uh, sometimes the um, different components of the sailboat mast will you know, shade my, my panels and I find I have way better production with two MPPT co controllers. I use a fuse block to protect the um, the battery side of the MPPT con controllers and I have a Bluetooth dongle where I can communicate with um, these two controllers with Bluetooth under this uh, on this VE bus that um, that Victron makes and I really love the interface I've got a hundred amp breaker that um, that protects the um, the line uh, the cable that goes um, to my batteries now I have a Y switch where I use uh, flooded and I have lipo uh, 4 batteries I usually just have it on the lipo setting uh, these of course these Victron MPP T controllers are um, have to be specially programmed for whatever the the source of the battery that I'm going to be using. But I really think these are great controllers, and I they're well worth that worth worth the money and easy to um, to deploy. So um, some of the features I really like um, is uh, I like the um, uh, grommet holes uh, that that I, I'm able to use the grommet holes uh, I'll show you here um, you can see some of these panels have grommet holes and um, they're very nice to um, to to uh, like this is an example of uh, one that doesn't have grommet holes but um, most of these panels will have um, grommet holes. Uh, I'm trying to show you one here. Okay, so um, I use these to help me mount the um, panels on, on the boat. Uh, and most of these on uh, Amazon, they have the gram. Here's a lens sun that has the. Um, grommet holes on. So what are some of the price ranges? Well, Lensun is uh, like 199 bucks for, and it's ETFE, uh, as you can see here, ETFE, and it's 199 bucks for 100 watts. You can go to the Soloban one, and, it look, and it's like $600, you know, and so for my purposes, you know where I'm just stowing them and bringing them out. I'm gonna just take my chances and and go with the cheaper one. I happen to have an All Powers, uh, but All, All Powers no longer has ETFE on Amazon. Uh, so let's see what else. Um, we covered about everything except for. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about how much panel you should have and a general rule of thumb in California is two is watts times 0.25 equals amp hours per day and that's about what I'm getting and I can even run my uh, flexible panels on cloudy days and it keeps up with my refrigerator now this next part of the video I'll kind of show you um, you know some actual deployment that I've done on the boat and some and some video on the boat so stay tuned so I'm um, I'm running this cable from, uh, from this port right here all the way up to here and uh, this is where I have an extension cord and I run the a solar panel forward. But when I'm underway, I don't run that one. I do run one when I'm running, when I'm underway. Um, and the sun's kind of down now. 
that you can kind of see my rig. Um, I just use uh, bungee cords to hold it down. It's a it's a flexible pin. And um, what I try to do is is shift it on the on the dodger a little bit. It's generating a couple of amps right now, but I'm running with an autopilot, so um, it's helping me with my autopilot load. But the sun is uh, is is kind of headed down. One more bit. shot. Uh, my uh, solar panel. It really sticks to the Dodger very well, um, and uh, it, it, when I got the winds on the quarter right now. pretty well just exactly where it is and conforms well to the to the Dodger so here's my at anchor setup um, right there I, I I've got grommets on the, on the panels the, they're the flexible con they're all powers that you can buy on uh, I bought them on Amazon so I use those grommets to secure the this panel here this is kind of my roving panel um, when the sun's up on this side, I'll set it on this side of the boat, and then when the sun goes down, I'll set it over here on this part of the boat. And uh, you can see over there that I have an extension cord that I make connections back in the back. So this, I've got a lot of extension cord. Some people even take these panels and cantilever them off the lifelines with a little rope that's, that uh, supports them. So on my roving panel, what I did was I've got uh, grommets that I um, attached to Lexan, um, this uh, double-walled Lexan that they use for, uh, you, I bought it at Home Depot, a sheet, and then I put then I put grommets in the Lexan, then I put um, its dual-walled Lexan, and then I put um, tie wraps to secure. Right here you can see the tie wraps here to secure. So I did that for all the grommets. So it, 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 it keeps this, one of the problems with these flexible panels, they're very thin as you can see here. Um, one of the problems is they flex, they flex too much. And then that messes them up. So, uh, and I, I just wanted some rigidity. And then I keep, this one lives in the four peak and I never ha ha set it when I'm underway. It's almost, I never would probably set it up except for maybe in the cockpit where it's not gonna blow away. And then over here, this is the one I can pretty much set up um, when it's blowing. Uh, I just um, have, um, I just use that uh, bungee on one side, and then I use the uh, um, bungee on the other, and then I have um, hard rope here, and it seems to uh, resist the wind coming this way, and you, see, you can see my dodger kind of dips this way a little bit, and so that helps um, keeping, keeping the wind from getting underneath the flexible. And you notice I'm not using the dual wall Lexan because I need that. It's already supported adequately by the Dodger. So, um, and it's, and, and the Dodger, you know, keeps it from, from, from doing too much um, flexing, which is the problem with these flexible panels. And if you look around on my boat, you know, it's kind of hard to see where I'm gonna put hard panels and I, and they're very difficult to stow and I only deploy these when I'm when I'm out on a trip I don't I don't have any need for them uh, when I'm at shore so this for now seems so like what a I have is setting. for the, my for my solar I have a select selector switch that allows me to switch from uh, the lead acid versus the um, versus the uh, um, lipo battery and um, I'll show you real quickly what I'm doing here. So I've got the um, solar chargers there, the Victron solar chargers, with a switch to select between the the Bluetooth um, module there. That's kind of expensive, so I've got a switch that I select between there. It's got its own um, it's got its own circuit breaker on the on the 
MPPT.